This is the first Sunday of our Stewardship Month, and there will be appeals on your heart and your journey to think about your giving in 2024. For today, the sermonic theme is Responding to God, Responding to God. Dr. Ebony Marshall Terman, Associate Professor at Yale University, is known for her writing and her prolific speaking. But she is also an active member, like many of you, of a church. She's a member of the famous Abyssinian Baptist Church. They have been looking for a minister heightened by the transition of their most recent pastor, and Morehouse alum, Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III. Often in the Baptist tradition, which is different from the Presbyterian, the Methodist, and the UCC, pastors serve until they are almost <laughs> at death's door. They served almost to the end of their life. And so it was with their pastor. And so now they've been in an 18-month search for a pastor. 18 months ago, a search committee was tasked with presenting a candidate to the congregation for a vote at a properly called church meeting. Dr. Terman has come out about two weeks ago with a scathing open-ed article on the gender bias of her church. She joins a few others who are beginning to critique unhealthy systems within the church. She reports the committee's work has primarily been conducted in secret with limited information given to the congregation. She also states, a vocal contingent of Abyssinian deacons has worked tirelessly with an energized group of Morehouse supporters and committee leadership to systematically eliminate all female applicants from the pool of candidates. She further states, even as the desired outcomes of the identified groups are distinct. They converge on one significant matter, gender bias. Dr. Terman is questioning the authority of the church and its casting of an all-male list of candidacy thus far. She is calling the church out for sure. She is challenging a power structure. This is where we enter the biblical text for today. Jesus is being questioned on his authority they were not the first. Even today, some question the authenticity of Jesus. The chief priests and the elder of the people had had their authority questioned as well. They were commissioned by those who ruled Rome. They lived not lacking. The people that were questioning him, their representation of the people was also questioned. I have observed that often leaders that develop a large following will get questioned by those closer to home. It isn't such an uncommon thing. With the rising debate of the immigrant crisis here in Chicago, what often gets heralded in debates is derogatory adjectives in reference to our newly put in office liberal mayor, Brandon Johnson. It goes with the job of being a leader almost that your authority will get questioned. Jesus is suspect. In a relatively short time, he has become powerful. But his power is different from the other powers. His power produces healing. His power is about drawing people closer to God and each other. Jesus' power is about hearing people and helping people. Jesus' power is about releasing people from evil powers. Break every chain. Jesus' power is about hanging with those most folks wouldn't want to be seen with in the light of day. His power is entrusted by those that see him. He persistently emphasizes the teachings of God, healing of the sick, and embracing those who have fallen down on life's journey. He's a different cookie. He's not the usual chocolate chip or oatmeal with raisin. Folks begin to talk. He walks with an arch in his back. He is confident in the one who has sent him. Jesus takes on the power structures, perhaps differently than Dr. Terman, but he takes them on. Look a little bit closer with me at the text. When the religious leaders ask him about his authority, he says, before, before I answer your question, let me, let me ask you a question. 
And so he puts out there to, 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 to them, so did the baptism of John come from heaven or did it come from a human origin? Without going too far down another road, the leaders are baffled. To answer one way is to give Jesus authority, but to answer another way would incite the crowd. They choose the safe route, and they say to Jesus, we don't know. But I don't know if they didn't know. Did they answer honestly? And so Jesus is like, you not answering the question? Guess what? I'm not answering your question either. Jesus reminds us we don't have to answer unfair questions, and we can always ask questions ourselves. Amen. But even after no one has answered a question, Jesus is not done with them yet. He's just getting started, and he tells a story about two sons and finishes it with a question. They are both asked by their parent, these two sons, to go work in the field. The first son says, nope, but later thinks about it, changes his mind and goes. The second son says, yes, I got you, and never makes it to the field. Which son do you think is right? It's not how you start that matters, maybe, the parable is saying, but where you land. It's okay if you got a slow car, a slow start. It's okay if you doubt. But somewhere along the way, the first son changed his mind, and he did what was asked of him. Years ago, churches started this thing where they would have people turn to your neighbor, say to your neighbor. They'd have people stand up and walk to each other. It happened to me yesterday at a festival. Turn to the person beside you and say this. Most folks went along with it, but somewhere after a couple years, people would start mumbling and complaining, I don't like being told what to do. Some even began to rebel. They just wouldn't do it. And it got me wondering, were they responding to the person that was asking them to do it, or were they responding to God? At what point are we responding just to God? This month, we will appeal to you. We'll appeal to you to give. We do it every year, and we have some of the same people that give faithfully. When churches appeal for money, sometimes people become suspect. You know, in other churches, they say, man, the pastor is driving around in the BMW. Y'all don't have to say that here. Amen. I'm driving around in a Kia, the cheapest car that's me. So I have to go there. We can knock that one off. But we hope that you, congregation, will discern it not just as people standing up here telling their stories and their testimonies, we hope that you will discern it as a call from God. You might complain, you might say, I don't have the money, there they go again, but maybe like the first son, you'll get there as a response to God, you show up. This, this is our hope. Yesterday I was at a concert festival talking to various strangers. I love that, just talking to strangers on a beautiful Saturday. I ended up talking to a mom of another singer, and we were enjoying the music and the weather. Wasn't yesterday just gorgeous weather? Some said it was a little hot, but it was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. And there was this vibe of the Canto Latino Festival over in Pilsen, and we're out in a field um, by the Mexican Art Museum. And this mom was telling me that her daughter was now in her second year in Voices of Chicago, Division of the Uniting Voices Chicago. So she said, her daughter told her, last year, mom, you rarely came to any of my events. The mom heard her daughter and registered that in her spirit, that her not showing up had registered negatively for her daughter. She also responded with an affirmation in herself that this year she would try to do better. So far, they've had a couple of events, and she's been mom 100% on target, showing up. She could have said, child, she could have said, go sit down somewhere, girl. She could have said, I am working. She could have said, I'm a single parent. She could have said a lot, but she listened, and she responded to the words of her daughter. This morning, we're calling you to respond to God's call. I don't know, somehow by accident, I watched up watching, I winded up watching the memoir of Joe Frazier, movie on Netflix. All I knew was that Joe Frazier was a boxer. I don't know if you guys know much more, but that's what I knew. He's a boxer. 
But I learned watching the movie that Joe Frazier grew up poor. As a result of being poor, he got picked on a lot. As a result of getting picked on, he had an overdose of anger. As being picked on a lot, he had a chip on his shoulder. As a result of being picked on, it took a little, only a little bit to set him off. One teacher thought, I need to put that guy in a ring. And that curtailed him, that gave him a place to unleash. So he still reacted, but now he had a ring where he could beat the crap out of people. And if you follow Joe Frazier, he did put some lights out for a couple of seconds there. He even got mad at God, like, I ain't got no time for God. His mom was very religious. His sister got sick, and they were all in the room, and he was fussing with God, and he was like, God, if you do this, one of those, if you do, he started praying to God. His family believes that his prayer reached God and saved his sister. And Joe, he tried to put it off, but he felt, he felt the hand of God on his life. And Joe responded. He got up and he quit fighting. He quit all the money, all the masses of riches, and he responded to the call of God. I don't know what would make you walk away from money other than the call of God. In the healing of his sister, God got his attention. And Big Joe responded, and he quit it fighting just like that. I imagine that maybe that's what it felt like for the disciples in this text, and many of those that were listening and in the communities and a part of the Jesus movement. They felt something, something inside so strong, and that something they couldn't ignore, but it called for a response. In my Baptist church, they would say that something got a hold of me. Joe continued to respond to the call of God. In this text, people were responding to the words of John. In Matthew, all the Gospels, people were responding to John. And people were responding to the words of Jesus. Anybody can say yes, but to respond with action That's taking this faith journey another step. Something was happening here, and the religious leaders noticed it too, and it scared them. Something different, something so dynamic that even the tax collectors and the prostitutes walked away from money, responding to God's call. Many responded to the call in those days, and we can too, but it is a choice. It's a choice every day to respond to the call of God, to respond to the call of stewardship, to respond to the call of people God puts in our path daily, to respond to the call of those who have fallen or who have felt marginalized this month. Every day, today, we can respond to the call because clearly, We have a choice. Amen.